Hello and welcome to Vermont Lavender. I'm Diane. Today we are making Lavender Dream Foaming Bath Bubbling Salts. So this has Epsom salts in it. This is my citric acid right here. And then this is cornstarch. This is a nice relaxing scent. It's a lavender chamomile and I also have a lavender essential oil in it too so it's a nice relaxing bath and it foams it fizzes and i'm going to make some little uh like chunks of salt that i will layer into my uh bottles and so I'll add a nice uh design element but i'm going to use i'll show you the packaging of it later and how I put it all together and I am doubling this recipe so if I say one cup two cup just follow the recipe down below that would be for a single batch so this is the baking soda right here and that is two cups and then I have a half a cup or a cup of my citric acid and then I have a half a cup of the cornstarch Baking soda is really nice. It's a softening agent or uh, ingredient. So it makes your bath water nice and soft. The citric acid, as it hits the water, starts to fizz. And then the cornstarch is, okay, so you want to stir this all up. And then I'm going to add my SLSA and I'm going to put my mask on for that. I do have my fan going. And so this would be four tablespoons. And this adds uh, nice, makes the bubbles and makes them last longer. And so I'm going to just fold this in, try not to create any cloudiness here. Just don't want it to poof up. Okay. So next, I'm going to put my wet mix together and then I'm going to incorporate it into here. This is three teaspoons of my lavender fragrance oil and then I'm going to add two teaspoons of the polysorbate 80 and that just helps it so it doesn't the colors don't stick to the sides of your tub and it's an emulsifier. And then I need one tablespoon of liquid bubble bath and I got this from Shea and Company so this is a this is a new ingredient and it doesn't come in this bottle <laughs> I transferred it into it because it's a lot easier to actually pour out so this is one tablespoon but I'm doubling it so I need two tablespoons so we are testing this ingredient and I hope it works well. I tried it out in my sink and it, the bubbles were really nice. So, And then also when you add salt to like a bubble bath, the salt actually because of the, um, the molecular structure of the salts, it actually pops all the, the bubbles. So the more salt that you add to this uh, ingredient here, these this uh, bubble salts that I'm making, or foaming salts that I'm making, the less bubbles you will have. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. So I just want to stir this all up. So I don't want to stir too much because I don't want it to get bubbly. And then I'm going to add the wet to the dry. All right, so I'm going to stir this up. And then after 
I get this all mixed, I'm going to just let it dry a little bit and then I'm going to do the next step. And that's where I add the, the Epsom salts. And so that's what makes it a nice relaxing bubble bath because you already have the bath salts in it and that's the Epsom salts. I can already smell it. Mm. I can smell it right through the mask. So when you make products, and somebody asked me that about the shower steamers, and they were making it, and it was really, really strong, but after time, it does uh, fade a little bit. That's just what naturally happens. It happens with soap, too. When I make cold process soap, and the first time you make it, it's really, really strong, or it smells, uh, sometimes when you use different fragrances, it smells really bad and then after it's done curing oh, it smells so much different and it actually smells better and that's a lot with what happens when you make cold process soap so I'll set this aside and I'll let that dry and so I'm going to be using my party pink mica and then I have Queen's purple mica and this is all lip safe and skin safe and so this is a lavender mica and I really I love this color. So uh, this is a lavender theme, so I'm using lavender micas. And then these are the bath salts right here, and these are all colored. And this is uh, Queen Anne Purple Mica, and this is just Epsom salts. And so I'm going to use that for my decorations. That's a nice pink one. And I'll probably do a video on that, on how to color salts. And this one has a little bit of glitter in it, so that's why it has a little bit of shimmer. I'm going to split the batch, and then I'm going to split it and put it into five different bowls. So I'm going to do a cup here. I just want to measure this a little bit. So it's a cup of the mixture right there. So what I'm doing by splitting the batch is I'm saving some of this because I want to make some uh, layered salt chunks. So I'm going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of this one. And then this is my party pink mica. And since I did double this, it's actually a quarter of a teaspoon. And then this is my lavender mica, which I showed you earlier. And then that's the queen. So what I'm going to do is just stir this all up. Yeah, that breaks it up better. So I'm going to use my hands and break up all those salt chunks. I could have let it dry a little bit longer, but time's ticking away. I gotta get going. I have to make dinner pretty soon for the fam. The kids get hungry, you know. So does hubby. <laughs> hubby gets hungry too. So let me know in the comments below, do you take baths even during the summertime? And are they like cool baths or do you take any milk baths or muscle soaking bath? That's really nice. Especially if you've been working out in the garden or you've had a nice, or you've had a long day from like hiking or something like that. A lot of outdoor activities in the summertime or even swimming and stuff like that and you just want to Take a break from it all and de-stress. That's why taking a bath is so nice and soothing. So I'm really getting in here and I'm just making sure that it's all combined. And I know I've been making a lot of uh, videos lately with lavender and lavender uh, chamomile. It's just, it's such a relaxing scent and uh, my customers really enjoy it, especially lavender and I will try some other ones. I want to try sea salt and lily. That's a fragrance I want to try and even beach is a good one for sun and sand. Pretty well mixed and then I'm going to do this one. And see I have these white little chunks right here so you don't want any of these those chunks in there. This is an easier bowl. Get my hands right in there. 
I have my camera set up. I have another camera. I got a, a newer stand, camera stand. I'll have to show you what it is. And so hopefully that makes my videos a little bit more interesting and easier to watch. I'm trying to up my video skills and trying to get better with each one. But it's a lot that, you know, a maker is doing. You're making the products. You have to remember, oh yeah, that's right, that I put that in there. It's just like cooking. It's very, very similar. I guess like any crafting skill, really. So much that goes into making these videos. But I really enjoy doing it, and I really want you to learn how to make this stuff, you know, um, or just give you ideas on the different products that can be made. Uh, you can make it at home, or you can make it for your business to sell farmer markets, or even like craft shows and things like that. So you can say, hey, this is something that I can make that's doable. The ingredients aren't too much. This is not too bad. This has, how many ingredients? It has 10 ingredients, and then you have the micas. It's not too bad. And the bubble bath is very easy. The stuff that you can get at a grocery store. And it's better to use something that's unscented. I'm gonna add more to it. I really like taking my mixer so much faster <laughs> than doing it with my, my hands. I'll put my mixing blades right on, zip zip. And my safety goggles. It's warm in the studio. I'm going to add one cup of the Epsom salts. And the reason I'm only doing one, one cup, even though I doubled this batch, is I just I want more bubbles. And then this is dendritic salt. Mix it so it does this, so it doesn't stick. And it also helps to hold the scent. So you have a longer lasting scent. So it's a really important ingredient to add when you're making bath salts. Okay, let me mix this up. Once this dries, I can take out a little bit of those chunks. I still have a little bit left, these little teeny weeny chunks. So when, it's, when it dries overnight, so I'm going to take some of this out and then add my, I'm um, going to make the chunks with it. But this will dry overnight and then I'll take out those little, those little things. And here in my studio, in my shop, I have um, might as well just call it a shop because that's what it is. I have a dehumidifier. I think I need to get another one. I'm supposed to have a lot of rain tomorrow. Okay, so let's do a cup here of Epsom salts. And I have it in a nice big, oh look at the mess here. A nice big container. Okay, so that's one cup. So each one of these bases gets a cup of salt. And then I'm going to add my dendritic salt. Okay, so I'm going to mix all this up and then take a portion of each of it and then work on making the salt chunks. So it is a little bit of a process. And at the end of this video, I will have a demo and you'll see how fun these are in the back. This is really pretty just like this. Put this in some salt tubes and stuff like that. That would sell really nice. So easy, nice little bubbling. You do have to label all your ingredients and the weight like normal. See, it's already drying up, which is really nice. And this will be nice and dry. When it dries overnight, it's nice in the bottles and they don't like clump together at all. So I know some people, what they do is they actually bake the salts 
they bake them so they don't clump together but the dendritic salt really does help to hold the scent but also make it so it's more free flowing it's almost like an anti natural anti-caking agent Yeah. 